fact of the matter remains, it is a seven-member crew, including John Glenn, each of them outstanding in their own way. There's the walkout as you see them go by. This happened earlier this morning as they headed out to uh, launch pad 39B. They're now all strapped in. The hatch is uh, closed. And uh, let's uh, talk to Kurt Brown. I'll talk about Kurt Brown first. Kurt Brown is a graduate of the uh, Air Force Academy. Spent a lot of time flying A-10 aircraft. He uh, is a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Air Force, 42 years old, from Elizabethtown, North Carolina. His mother has been very ho-hum about his career, but when she found out that he was going to be flying with Senator Glenn, she got rather excited. Now, sitting beside him in the right seat, Steve Lindsay. He's also an Air Force colonel. Steve Lindsay is the pilot, and he is 38. He is from Arcadia, California. He's the one who is pushing the concept of uh, putting civilians in space, perhaps uh, engaging in tourism in space someday, if that becomes practical. Mission specialist Stephen Robinson is the payload commander of this mission. His crewmates call him Steve Nye, the science guy. He is uh, an interesting guy with a PhD who uh, has a lot of interesting ideas about a lot of things. He's 43 years old, born in Sacramento, California, and he is excited to shake John Glenn's hand once they get into orbit. Because John Glenn, the first time he went to orbit, was all alone. Scott Perizinski has a resume which would take up about uh, six or seven of our screens here on CNN, so we'll give you the short version. Scott Perizinski has lived all over the world, is a medical doctor and mission specialist on this mission. He is 37 years old and originally from Little Rock, Kansas, although that doesn't really speak to his background. He's lived all over the world, as I say. He also is serving as the flight engineer, which means he sits in the middle seat right between, between the uh, pilot and the commander. And uh, as he has told uh, us many times, for an astronaut, this is about as exciting as it gets. Pedro Duque, Juan Glenn, as they call him uh, these days, around the uh, Cape and in Houston. He will be the first Spaniard in space, uh, if all goes well, in an hour and 25 minutes. He is uh, 35 years old, born in Madrid, Spain. He's been waiting six years for a flight. He was with the European Space Agency, first signed on six years ago. Was uh, training for some mere missions, never got an opportunity, and uh, this is his first opportunity. Jaki Mukai, also uh, on board this uh, mission. She is from Japan. She's a payload specialist, and she has already earned the title as the first Japanese woman in space on a previous mission. She's 46 years old, and she is also a medical doctor. And her, her mother, at age 73, said, Oh, Shiaki, I want to go myself, when she heard that John Glenn was aboard. And finally, of course, the man who uh, needs uh, less biographical sketching for you, because you're pretty familiar with his story, John Glenn, the lowly payload specialist on this flight, a NASA astronaut who uh, was uh, among the first seven, the Mercury Seven, at the age of 77, making his second flight, originally born in Cambridge, Ohio, grew up in New Concord, went on to a little career in politics, and now he's back in his original profession of flying high-performance aircraft and spacecraft. And uh, Walter Cronkite, you've known John Glenn for years. Uh, he, you've, I've heard you describe him as a Boy Scout, and I think you mean that as a compliment. Isn't that right? Well, absolutely, although I'm not sure that uh, all of his fellow astronauts actually consider it that way at the moment. I was quoting them. I wasn't making that up. Uh, it was th Their feeling about John was he was the oldest of the group, of the original seven, and he was he seemed a, a little bit, uh, uh, a, a little humorless to them. Uh, he, he was so devoted to the mission. When they went to Langley, Virginia, for the first time, immediately after being selected as astronauts for training, for instance, all the rest of them took their families down there. They're going to live there for months, for years, perhaps. And uh, he didn't take his family because he thought he ought to be devoting all of his time uh, to, to the mission training. Uh, it was that kind of thing. And in each, almost each of the decisions all the way down the line, John was out there saying it ought to be done this way. Let's be sure we're right about it and do it this way. Uh, and uh, I, I think that's where he got the reputation of Boy Scout. Well, you, you, you might get the impression, uh, if you've, for, for instance, seen the movie The Right Stuff, that, that John Glenn was, uh, well, I, the pejorative would be goody two-shoes and that the rest of the guys were just boys will be boys kind of guys. I'm not sure that that's an entirely accurate picture. Well, I, I, oh, I, I, I hate that picture. I thought that uh, uh, Tom Wolfe's book, The Right Stuff, was pretty good. 
But when they made that into a movie, they turned it into a monkey house, fraternity house kind of an environment. They libeled almost everybody concerned, all the astronauts, all the backup personnel, all the uh, scientists. Uh, they, they made the German scientists uh, look like uh, <coughs> burlesque characters with their accent. <coughs> Lyndon Johnson was made a buffoon. The press the was made out to be a bunch of fools. <coughs> it was a terrible situation. <coughs> all right. We're going to take a break, break. Our continuing coverage of the launch of the Discovery 7 will continue in just a moment. Stay with CNN.